What is going on YouTube? Bryce Builds It All, your favorite AMPIA, finally back with another video. And today I'm gonna to be making a video, I've kind of been contemplating on how to make it, been waiting for some more details, but I wanna give you a few of my thoughts on the recent UPS cargo liner crash that happened in Louisville, Kentucky. So if that interests you, stick around. Before I launch into this, I just wanna say that um, my, th my heart, my thoughts, and my prayers do go out to the victims of this tragedy. These, these things are always a tough pill to swallow in aviation. It's not anything that any of us um, like to see happen or like to deal with, especially when there's speculation that it may have been maintenance's fault. So with that being said, I am not going to be making any sort of generalizations or speculations as to what I think happened. I'm only going to be talking about the facts of what happened and then kind of talking about next steps, the things that are going to happen and some of that. So if you're not already aware, UPS flight 2976 from Louisville, Kentucky to Honolulu, a cargo airplane, an MD-11, caught fire during takeoff and then crashed, killing all three crew members. And I think as of today, I, they reported another, I think nine or 10 people on the ground. Now, the reason I am making this video is I've seen a lot of sort of speculation and sensationalization by news outlets as to what happened, saying a lot of things, getting people riled up, and I wanna clear the air on what's gonna happen next. So the first thing that we need to talk about is the NTSB, the National Transportation Safety Board. If you're not familiar with the National Transportation Safety Board, they are who investigates all accidents, even trucking accidents, but aircraft accidents, any sort of these tragedies that happen to US registered aircraft or on US soil, they will investigate the cause and try to figure out what happened and bring those who are responsible. Um, I'm not gonna say to justice because that's not the right word and I'll talk more about that later, but kind of get those who are responsible um, brought in for retraining, suspension, justice, whatever it may be, if you will. So when this happened, more than likely, the NTSB was on scene very, very quickly within a few hours and within 24 hours, I guarantee you, they already knew that the aircraft had been maintained in San Antonio before that. Now, if you're not familiar with my channel and this is the first video you're clicking on, I typically make videos about aircraft mechanics and becoming an aircraft mechanic, but I am in San Antonio. I teach at a Part 147 school here locally. I know where the aircraft was serviced. I'm not going to be saying names. I have contacts over there. I have reached out, but nobody has reached back out to me. Um, so anyways, doesn't matter. The aircraft was serviced here in San Antonio, Texas, and then after that had an accident in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, there's been speculation that uh, the pylon was over torqued. There's been speculation that this may have happened or that may have happened. And it's really hard to say that, nail down what happened this early and everything. What we do know is that the aircraft was on fire when it took off. It's kind of a blurry video of it. There's actually a few videos of it. Um, but we know that the aircraft was on fire when it took off and then it crashed. So with that said, the NTSB is going to show up and they're gonna start putting this airplane back together in a hangar somewhere sort of around like uh, a chicken wire skeleton and trying to find the cause of the accident. And they usually can determine that pretty quickly, but this is gonna take months and months and months. And like I've been telling my students and other people, the NTSB is not going to release an official um, summary, if you will, they're officially findings for another year, probably two years before they say this is what caused the accident. So it's going to take a long time before the FAA, or not the FAA, the NTSB says the cause of the accident and by then it's going to be old news and no one's going to be talking about it. So with that said, could it have been maintenance? Absolutely. And if it is maintenance's fault, then I'm sure the people at the company that were working on it, I almost said their name there, I'm sure the people at the company that were working on it will probably be drug tested and fired. They probably already have been, if I'm completely honest. Everybody that worked on that aircraft the last time it was at the maintenance station has probably been drug tested. Toolboxes have been locked. They're investigating things. They're going through maintenance records, figuring out what was done, if it's related to the accident, and all that kind of stuff. And the NTSB is starting to put together a picture of what may have happened. Now there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong. And one of the things, like I said, it was on fire. So let's say, and I am speculating here, let's say that the turbine wheel came apart inside the engine and that's what caused it to catch fire. Or maybe that's what caused the pylon to detach, whatever it may be. Then the NTSB is going to start looking more into that. And if that isn't what was worked on in San Antonio, then it's not the maintenance stations in San Antonio's fault. I mean, it could be if they missed it, but more than likely 
they're going to start looking into who last did a hot section inspection on that engine. And that's just one example. If they find that maybe something was over torqued or something was missed, they're going to start pulling tools and checking calibration date and checking who worked on it last, who signed it off, the interviews will begin, and so on and so forth. But like I said, it's going to take the NTSB a lot of time to put this all together. So with that said, looking at the crash, a lot of people are talking about like the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder or the black boxes. And a lot of people think like the black box is some magical thing that's going to tell them exactly what happened, but it really doesn't. What the black box records, the flight data recorder, records the engine parameters, the aircraft parameters, and basically any data that it can gather. Things like airspeed, things like angle of attack, engine temperatures, oil pressure, RPMs, like the list goes on and on and on. And it sort of paints a digital picture of the condition of the aircraft when the crash happened. That coupled with the cockpit voice recorder, which is recording all conversations said on the intercom and anything on the radio, so they can hear what the pilots are saying and how the pilots are reacting to what's happening. They'll begin to piece together what actually happened during the crash. And that will give them a better picture on what the pilots were experiencing and when this happened. For example, if they were on takeoff before it was on fire, before anything happened, and maybe the pilot said something like it's it it feels underpowered. I don't know. But they'll they'll start to look at the cockpit voice recorder for that. I do want to go back to for a second. I was talking about the maintenance station here where it was last serviced and I think this is kind of part of the news sensationalizing things. It is way too soon and way too early to be saying what the exact cause was of the accident. We just don't know. All we know is that it was on fire when, he, when it took off and it crashed, right? And that could have been a result from the maintenance that happened here in San Antonio. It could have been a result of maintenance that happened before that, if the aircraft was in San Antonio for something else, I don't know what it was here for. That hasn't been released, but if the maintenance was in San Antonio for something else, they might not have even looked at what could have caused the accident. Doesn't mean, though, that the NTSB hasn't shown up and started looking through maintenance records and work orders and all that kind of stuff and drug testing mechanics and interviewing mechanics and trying to find the cause of the accident. Now I did have somebody ask, well what if they determine that it was a mechanic's fault? What's going to happen to them? Are they going to go to jail? And the interesting question to that answer is actually no. So unless they can prove uh, gross negligent, then somebody might go to ho jail for negligent homicide or something like that. But probably what's going to happen if they do figure that it was a mechanic's fault is they're going to figure out why. Was it a lead told somebody to sign something off? Did somebody sign something off knowing it was unairworthy? Or did somebody just simply make a mistake and miss something like a crack or sign off corrosion that was out of limits but they thought it was within limits and the truth of that is is that if the mechanics weren't doing anything malicious at the time they weren't pencil whipping something as we like to say then the faa may suspend their certificates and have them go to some sort of retraining that's if they even have one being a repair station they can certify their own mechanics um, if they don't have an amp then more than likely the company that hired them is going to release them from their job duties, if you will. And that's probably going to be about all that's going to happen to the mechanics is they may get fired from their jobs. They may or may not have their AMP suspended unless they did something malicious, in which case their AMP will be revoked. And that's a different story. But if their AMP is suspended, they're going to get some sort of retraining requirements that they have to go through to get their AMPs re reissued. That's if, like I said, they're an AMP. But it can go a lot deeper than this. And I'm not trying to speculate anything this early. So we're all just going to have to play the waiting game and see what happens. Uh, so there you go, everybody. That's going to do it all for this video. Like I said, it's just kind of my thoughts on things, um, what's going to happen moving forward. Uh, like I said, we're kind of up in the air in a waiting game of figuring out what the NTSB says in their preliminary report, what the cause was, and then their final report probably a year or two years from now before we have that. But uh, if you found the video interesting, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, and all of that uh, good stuff. More videos are coming in the future. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say on it. So be easy.